Okay, so today I wanted to speak about something that is vitally important, and that's the difference between love and sex. And this is very much um, the cause of most suffering on earth. The most contaminating energy is sex, and the most healing energy is love. And today these words are completely destroyed by the superficiality and the ignorance of our fallen society. In other words, we have now used the word sex and love almost interchangeably. As though you could say sex and love are almost the same thing. People won't even know the difference in many cases. Of course, a lot of people would say sex has to do with the physical activity of sex, but and love is a more broad thing. But nowadays, we have lost the significance of these words. First of all, love is completely destroyed in its true meaning. People say, I love my car, I love this, I love that. People who, who will love each other one day and hate each other the other. Like you see with so many couples that are married. But this, this is literally the difference of heaven and hell. It's literally the difference between the earth and the world. It's literally the difference between um, healing, love is the healing factor, and sex is the destructive energy. And this sexual energy is actually the ego you could say the ego drive, the fuel that drives the, this destructive, selfish ego system, the ego construct, the mind-body construct, belief system of the separate self. And so I wrote some of these things down like here, but basically the, we've been talking about a couple of times this thing like um, the, the, the ego and being, for example. So the same thing, the ego is, would be the sexual drive and the being is the quantum field of healing, which is the love. And Nowadays, the act or the activity of sex, of physical intercourse, physical um, con contact between bodies um, on a sexual level, is one of the most destructive energetic activities on earth. And it's, it's a good reason that even some of the religions, even things like Christianity and you know, the, the, the outdated religions that are, are so ineffective in their way of explaining these kinds of... Um, things that we speak about here in a more real sense instead of just dogmatic regurgitation and manipulation through churches and religions. We're talking about um, it in a more real sense, but even in these religions, people were not supposed to have sex before they got married. They were not to have to have um, intermarital relationships. Uh, you know, there was no, was not supposed to be any of this sexual activity that we see today. Of course, the entire Hollywood business is focused on sex. Even in the car sales, you can have beautiful women sitting on, physically beautiful women, that is, sitting on cars and stuff like that. Nothing to do with the car, but, you know, these, all these sexually suggestive ways, let alone all the movies that we see with sex in the city, in the series, and all the nonsense that we see nowadays with sex. And it should literally be seen like the devil's energy, like the demon energy, the lower levels of demonic, interdimensional um, parasitic type of energies, that is sex, versus the godly, loving, true, pure, conscious um, energies of love. And the activities that people now engage in in the world by having sex so liberally, like it is something you just choose, like a meal in a restaurant, even that shouldn't be choosed, um, it's chosen that quickly, because there's so much difference in quality food. Uh, some of it's not even food at all. So. Sex is something that should be really, really careful. It's like playing with napalm. And nowadays we see in the younger children and the generations that have been um, raised by the television and all of that satanic nonsense that they present, sex has become this most normal thing which is people think they can just choose. Now, if I would give you a napalm or some explosive device that if you shake it too much it would explode like you see in some of the movies. Just the, the mere touching of one cable could, could cause it to explode. This is what sex is. But people play with it as though it's nothing, you know. The people play with, with, with sex as though it's something they can just do whenever they want, with whoever they want, whether it's with men or with women or men with men and women with women. And, 
and nowadays you got the whole pedophilia thing, which has been going on, of course, for a long time with children, and you've got bestiality. This whole sexual energy is one of the most destructive, it's the most destruct destructive energy on earth, destroying and causing the very destruction of this existence. And people don't like this because they think they have a choice. Well, I tell you one thing, I say to people sometimes when I have this conversation, which I have rarely with people, because a lot of people are just not intelligent enough to have these kinds of conversations, but I say, look, if I I'm having dinner with, with you, let's say, with somebody, and they have a new pants on. Let's say it's a nice shirt, white shirt, and a nice new pants. They bought it just a couple of days ago. First time they're wearing it, and we're at a nice Italian restaurant. We're having lasagna or spaghetti or something. If I would stick my finger in that lasagna and then want to wipe it off on that person's shirt, they would resist. They would say, look, you know, don't do that. You're going you're gonna to mess up my shirt. I won't be able to remove the the sauce stain out of that shirt, right? And we know that. We know that when you drop something on the floor, it can stain the floor, it can scratch, or your car can break. However, these satanic like levels of existence that we've now dropped to give us absolutely no education on sex versus love. Love versus sex. They give us no education on the fact that, look, if I can stick my finger in a spaghetti sauce, and try to wipe it off on somebody's shirt. And they'll pull back and say, whoa, keep that off my shirt. What the hell are they thinking when they're sticking their sexual reproductive organ into somebody else, or as a man into somebody else, or as a woman receiving the phallus in, inside of her? You know, if you can be stained by a spaghetti sauce on your shirt, what do you think the sexual energy is going to do? Even the being in the vicinity of somebody else's pranic field, their energy body, even being close to somebody else's energy body already affects you. What you surround yourself with will affect you. Birds of a feather flock together, not only because they flock together because they take a liking to each other, but once you stick around certain birds of a feather, your feathers will start having the same energy field, the same colors and the same ways. So we are affecting each other. And the most effective way, the most energetically effective way to influence another is the sexual bonding of man and woman. This, this level of communication is not at that level of being against something. It's demonstrating the sexual drive on earth has done an incredible amount of damage because you cannot have sex or have se inter the, the, the body connective connectivity with another body without affecting their energetic field. In other words, the karmic disposition that anybody has, their past, their emotional um, baggage, is communicated between man and woman when they make love. In other words, whenever you have physical sexual contact with another body, this is the most effective way to blend the two energy fields of the bodies together. In other words, let's say a young girl of a young age still a virgin, um, quite pure, quite innocent, raised in a generally you know, happy family without any rape or stupidity like that, which happens so often in this world, never been sexually molested in any way, you know, a good, innocent, let's say, childhood, as ignorant as those can be. But in and of itself, quite pure. If she would have sex with a man, uh, her first boyfriend, who had you know, already 10 girlfriends, Basically, she will be taking on the energy field of that man and all 10 other people that he's been with, plus all other people that those people that he's been with. So we're talking about an instant fusing and melting together through the sexual act of coming together in the sexual uh, bonding and therefore fusing her energy field, her pranic field, her karmic, um, her karmic bondage will now be merged with the karmic bondage of those others. You're literally absorbing, and woman more than man, because man is a projectile and woman is a receiver. And so the, hence also the shape of the reproductive organs. The man will be injecting much more of his karmic field into the female than the man will be absorbing from the female. And so in the sexual act, it's supposed to be love. And this is where the words in Dutch, I really like the words in Dutch. In Dutch they use making love 
They call it freeing, vrijen. And vrijen literally is liberating, freeing. So the act of making love or vrijen is completely opposite to sex. Sex is having sex. Sex is having it for yourself, like having a meal. Doesn't matter if you're having a meal with 20 people, you're the only one consuming the meal for your body. The sustenance you're getting out of it, which in this case of sex is destructive energetic field, is for you, it's a taking, it's not a giving. Love making is a making, it's not a taking, it's a making of more love. It's completely opposite, it's completely polar, it's completely the opposite. It's literally the difference between heaven and hell. And so the act of having sex is a taking, a destructive, egoic form of expression, and also um, it's not liberating the other party, whereas love making is freeing, liberating, and that's why it used to be called that the man was taking on the woman. He was taking her on, so that when they were getting married um, as virgins, ideally, all the karmic um, bonds that she had got, all the baggage, all the, the energy blockages that she had accumulated from the life of her ignorant raising of her conditioning, was man's job to take out of her, liberating her, freeing her from egoic selfishness, freeing her from her karmic bond so that she could be a free, spirited, loving, in the moment being of pure love and truth. And so the man's job is to liberate the, the woman. Nowadays, the women are just as much man as the men are men. You know, all about me, myself and I, you know, selfishness has become the sexual drive of taking and now the children are having sex to, as though it's, it's as though you're p picking, like I said, a meal or like which shirt am I going to wear today? Oh, which, who am I going to sleep with today? You know, these people are, I know girls around where I live even that are um, of the age of my son and they've been with five, six women and they're, you know, they're with sucks, five, six men, I'm sorry. And they're like, 17, 18, 19 years old. They've been with five, six, seven different men and some women. You know, it's just incre incredible and the contamination, they can't handle it. And so now they are not just themselves and the conditioning of their family and their religion and their upbringing the way they came. Now they've taken up all this other melting pot of chaos, all these karmic irresponsibilities that nobody's taken responsibility for. All these people that are out there gathering more pain, more suffering, more ignorance, more delusion, more conditioning, more religious and social constructs that are false, more rubbish from the Hollywood. And here they are, accumulating and accumulating more, and then having sex and then taking on some of that and blending together with that, melting together with that. Total chaos. This is satanic energy form, and we've been literally duped into believing that sexual activity is some form of free expression and like the hippies even fell for it hardcore some of the the religious or you could say spiritual sects fallen for it things that Adida for example or places like Osho where they taught this rubbish of having you know free sexual intercourse with whoever you may and if you didn't you were selfish and you were egoic no the opposite is the truth real love real love making is taking on whoever you take on, which is in this case your partner, preferably of the opposite sex, to really do the job because the others are not made to liberate each other. The goodness, the rightness, the joy, all the movement is focused on it and all the sex is focused on it. And we're going deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole of crazy insanity because of mainly the sexual drive being um, not vilified, but the opposite, being turned into a god is some kind of like trophy to just screw everybody you want have sex with whatever and whoever you want at any time like it's some kind of god's gift that you can just do with it whatever you want well try sticking your finger in the spaghetti sauce and rubbing it on your shirt if you pull back from that well then be very careful if you don't pull back from the sexual drive and again i'm not condemning anybody you know we are all caught at some level or another in this delusion in this illusion in this place where we've been forsaken and where we've lost the knowledge, where we've not been educated. We know about mathematics and grammatics, grammar, you know, grammar and all that stuff, but nobody in school gave us real sexual um, education. All this nonsense just about condoms and stuff that's just, you know, to keep some of the diseases there away, but the, the psychic aspect of it, the energetic, pranic, energy field level of it, the psychic, psychological, 
affect the we have more than just you know um what do you call these diseases that that they have when they have sex with each other all these people they have these you know whatever psoas or whatever they call them well psychically there's way more things to be contaminated with than just the physical ones the physicals we know you know you can go to the doctor maybe get some medicine some false medicine for it or something but the real contamination is psychic is psychological is mental is the karmic fields blending together so sex versus love right i literally say like i said giving versus taking love is giving sex is taking the earth is love and the world is sex being is love and the ego is sex quantum field is love and the human thinking mind and its emotions is sex, right? Sex versus love. An immense world of difference. Literally a world of difference. Literally the difference between heaven and hell. So be very careful where you, where you stick your body parts and to whom you share your energy fields with. Because they've used this and they are using this through all the Hollywood stuff and all the sexual MTV clips and all the abominations which is focused on the destruction of our fields of quiet, silent, present, quantum being, the harmony that we intrinsically are if we don't engage in all these crazy activities.